Alright, what's going on you guys? It's Royce Jacob. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Trading Week Recap. A series I post every Friday where we reflect on the past trading week. We'll take a look at a few stocks that I personally believe define the week and I'll just let you guys know what I'm thinking about the markets in general as we head into the weekend. So as always, we will go over each topic that we're going to be discussing and then we'll dive into each one individually. In front of us, Trading View, we have a few charts to look at today. Excited to cover those with you guys. Um, but we will kick it off. I have decided that this is how I am going to start the Friday Trading Week Recap episodes with today's newsletter that I sent out this morning. So I'll read through this guy. Um, there's actually some news about the newsletter in this as well that I want to talk to you guys about too. So we'll cover that first. We then have this chart about Tesla and Bitcoin that TradingView published. So TradingView, as many of you know, this is the this is the platform that we use to look at charts. So TradingView published this and their data shows that Tesla and Bitcoin are the most viewed assets in America. That is very bullish for both Tesla and Bitcoin. We'll talk about that. We will then use that to segue into um, into Tesla stock split. So Kramer, CNBC, you guys might know him, might not, but uh, he had a good take on Tesla stock split. I agree with it. So we will cover this and I'll let you guys know what I'm thinking about Tesla stock split. We'll take a look at Tesla charts as well, too. So um, looking forward to that. And then we will move on to talk once again about Barstool's Dave Portnoy ho ho hosts the Winklevoss twins for Bitcoin talk. Um, I did mention this in yesterday's video. If you guys happen to watch the video was a little weird, I'll be honest. Um, but very bullish, very bullish for Bitcoin. So we will use that to move into some news about some Bitcoin miners. So Marathon Patent Group, you know, we have to talk about Riot Blockchain as well. So we'll get into those guys, look at the charts, cover today's price action. We will then go on to talk Sorrento. Not going to spend too much time on this one at all. Just I, I kind of want to use this as an example um, of what I think about some of this kind of just low key drama news. That's what I call it. I call this drama news, just hype news in, in a bad way. Um, about Sorrento in this case. So we will cover that. We'll take a look at Sorrento. Just go down the line here. I'll let you guys know what I'm thinking, just going down the watch list and uh, we'll really just briefly cover each sector. Okay. So before we do get into it, I will ask you guys to please give the video a like if you do go on to gain value from it, or if you are invested in any of the stocks we're talking about today, subscribe to the channel. If you're new around here and check out my complete portfolio and daily newsletter, what we're about to look at first link in the description, if you're interested. All right. So again, we will read through this. This was a, uh, this was a pretty solid one today. So, um, I'll try to get through this quickly, but I do want to go over this news with you guys that um, <clears throat> concerns the portfolio. OK, so happy Friday, family. I want to kick this one off with some news regarding the newsletter. I've decided to raise the price of my portfolio and newsletter service to twenty dollars a month starting this Sunday at midnight. So this is going to be midnight Hawaii time, which is going to be like 6 a.m. on Monday morning Eastern time. Before I go any further, I want to make it very clear that all of you who are already subscribed will continue to only pay the $15 that you're currently paying for as long as you stay a member. So for any of you who didn't happen to read this this morning, but maybe watching this, don't worry. If you are already subscribed, you will continue paying that $15 a month um, again, as long as you want to stick around. OK, so I've requested that Teachable grandfather all of you in and they're happy to do so. So, again, I do want to um, I'll, I'll explain why I want to do this, but I also just want to kind of give give something to my day ones okay i just want to show some sort of gratitude to my day ones and i just appreciate you guys who have been around and been part of this newsletter um since the beginning okay and going into this next phase not a huge next phase nothing's really changing aside from the price change but i'll explain why right here so i want to encourage inclusivity as much as possible but i feel that the responsible move for both myself and all of you guys is to keep the portfolio on the more exclusive side i truly appreciate all of you guys for sticking with me up to this point i love writing this for all of you every morning and look forward to the many to come all right so again i want to be as inclusive as possible especially on the youtube channel especially on here never want to discount anyone but with the newsletter with that portfolio program i, I just personally feel like it's it's hard for me to articulate but i feel like the responsible move is to keep it on the tighter side okay so i feel like a price difference that's a pretty significant now it's not a crazy amount of money but it's significant compared to to 15 so that's a 30 percent price raise and i feel like that should keep it a little more exclusive okay so that's the reason i'm doing it again i also want to reward my day ones and just um give something back to the people who have already been around all right so that said let's get down to business psa out of the way the markets are pretty chill today, which is refreshing considering the past few Fridays have seen a lot of volatility. We'll see if uh, we'll see if that continues through market close, which it did. You never really know on Fridays, 
Although big tech and the equity indices are fairly flat, there's some exciting price action going down in the portfolio. Let's get into it. Okay, so one, Ride Blockchain isn't looking quite as green as I was hoping it would. Um, again, I thought it was going to be a lot more green today if you guys caught yesterday's video, but still did pretty well, doing well after hours too. We'll take a look at the chart right after this. But I'm sure you guys can guess that I saw today's dip as an opportunity to pick up even more calls. I'm getting irresponsibly bullish on Ride at this point, but following the news they just released, see the link in the article below. So um, I talked about this link about um, Ride getting a lot more mining machines in yesterday's video so check that out if you uh didn't want to or you guys can look it up if you want i guess but um uh, along with the general strength of the cryptocurrency market as a whole, I feel it is primed to take off from almost every angle. So again, I'm getting irresponsibly bullish on a riot right now. I'm so bullish, especially with some of the news we're going to get into about Portnoy and just so much going on within the Bitcoin cryptocurrency ecosystem right now. Um, super bullish on riot. And uh, from a technical perspective, riot is almost perfectly following that upward trend, that upward arrow that I drew out yesterday. I swear I didn't touch today. I'm feeling extremely confident in the fact that riot will follow a pattern close to what I've drawn in the chart below. Super Super exciting times for this stock. Okay, so this is the chart I attached. This is on TradingView. We will take a look at this. Um, you know what? I'll just bring it up right now. And as we go through this newsletter, I'll kind of bring up the stocks that um, we're talking about in the newsletter. Okay. That's actually, I figured that's a better way to structure this. Okay. So we have right right here again. This is exactly what I sent out this morning. We're on a daily. Let's go to uh, like the hourly to make it look a little cleaner. Okay, so we're on the hourly right here. And again, this I, I did draw this yesterday. It's pretty pretty darn closely following that. Um, again, that's not a crazy feat on my part, but it does look nice that it's just right on that arrow. And uh, I expected to follow something similar to this. It it would surprise me from both a technical and fundamental perspective to see riot drop any lower especially considering that news they they just released in regard to like i was talking about those those new mining machines which will allow them to mine more bitcoin and make more money um i mean riot's looking great from a technical perspective it did set a higher low right here I, I do believe this is the low there's no chance for head and shoulders playing out in any sense and um i think we're just on our way to new highs here and uh, again you guys remember what riot has done in the past riot in 2017 reached a high of 45 dollars it's currently at a market cap of just 130 million dollars that is tiny in the grand scheme of the markets so there's a lot of room for growth here especially if the right hands get involved and there's enough attention put on this sector and um again the innovational capabilities of this sector all right, so I think Riot will, will, it's very, not very likely, but get you guys, my money's on this. This might, this very well could not play out, but that, this is what I'm guessing. Um, we'll just kind of, we'll go up, test this area that was floating around for a little bit, maybe go sideways around there until it ultimately breaks out again and comes up and retest this, uh, this absolute trend line that it started setting back in May. So again, use this as a solid trend line back in May. I still think it will, um, it will abide by this trend line and come up and once again retest this area of resistance at about five dollars and 75 cents that again give or take you guys know the deal but around that area okay so super excited on riot let's go back here and move down um move on to mara marathon patent group is seeing a very nice move today i want to get straight into the technicals on this one check out the chart below i think there's two ways that this could play out one we play out a head and shoulders pattern and retest the two dollar region that we saw before this huge rally i think that is extremely unlikely but just keep an eye out two we continue the uptrend and move up to ultimately test my first midterm price target around seven dollars and fifty cents i think this route is much more likely considering the bullish fundamentals surrounding the sector all right, so again, we'll go back here, take a look at Amara. So Mara, let's go once again to like the hourly, make this a little easier to look at. So Mara, uh, this is hard. This is very arguably not even a head and shoulders pattern. But again, you guys, head and shoulders patterns, a lot of patterns aren't going to be exact all the time. It's just a general, it's a psychological cue, okay? So it's it's looking at this the psychology of the market on the chart, and this is kind of playing somewhat of a head and shoulders pattern out, okay? So um, again, you see left shoulder, head, right shoulder, worst case scenario, again, we test back down to the high before we gapped up <clears throat> in the beginning of August and saw that huge, huge move up. Um, that is worst case scenario. I don't think that's gonna happen. Um, considering this news that just came out. So we'll, we'll take a look at this real quick. Um, so Marathon Patent Group announces $23 million contract with Bitmain to purchase 10,500 S19 Pro miners. Big news, very similar to the news uh, Riot just dropped. This article is very similar, okay? So um, I don't. I actually don't even need to read this to you guys. The title says that, but this is super similar to the Riot article as well in what like the, uh, the CEOs and chairmen said, okay? So Marathon's chief uh, CEO, Merrick Okamoto, shout out to my fellow Japanese, stated the execution 
completion of this contract with Bitmain represents a milestone event for our company. This investment is expected to result in Marathon being one of, if not the largest Bitcoin miner in North America. Uh, again, very, uh, very general statement, very similar to Riot's, what Riot's chairman just said in their article as well. But again, good. They're, they're moving in the right direction. They're making tangible steps. They're, um, to to expanding their operations and uh when you expand your operations again you guys you have more mining machines you can mine more bitcoin bitcoin price of bitcoin goes up all those all those like little little pieces of the pie do fit together and create for um, a super tasty pie that was a weird analogy that i just went for you guys get the point though everything's playing together the stars are aligning for these stocks in my mind and i'm super bullish so that is why this is uh, a very pessimistic scenario i don't think it's very likely to play out what i do think will happen is we'll probably come up um, just break the previous highs here um, come down once again retest the high that it set back in early august just about a week ago time is going so fast um, and then it'll again come up break a new high come back down retest the previous high and then go up to ultimately test uh, kind of my longer term time horizon, uh, not, not even long term, more like medium term time uh, price target, which is at $7.50. I'll show you guys why that is. So zoom out here, Riot in the past, back in 2017, set a lot of highs around this point. Uh, again, you see a lot of candles touching the 750 area, 750, a pretty psychological area. 750 $10. Once it passes 750 $10 is probably the, the, yeah. So like nine, $9, you see some candles over there. So if you're ever trying to work this out for yourself, guys, which I always recommend you do always do your own research, look at your own charts, make your own conclusions. You know, the deal, um, just look for where Riot has spent the most time and where it's peaked prior to pulling back. Because again, that's very telling of what it will likely do today. Psycho psychology on charts. You guys remember that. All right, so that's Mara. Let's uh, let's keep moving here. Sorrento is seeing a dip today, but I'm still very confident in the uptrend it has developed. I believe that it'll stay within the channel I've drawn C chart below until they release some banging news and see another breakout to new yearly highs. Moderna is pretty flat today. I seriously just have a gut feeling that they're coming at us with some good news soon. Guess we shall see. Okay, so Moderna is is flat. I don't even know if we're gonna look at Moderna right now. I just want to establish that I'm still fundamentally bullish. I'm not even like thinking about much more than just i think moderna's gonna succeed and they're about due for another rally i've been following moderna for a long time i have the gut feeling we'll see if i'm right or not i don't know but um again let's look at sorrento we'll touch on this real quick and i just want to talk to you guys this this definitely was a catalyst in sorrento pulling back over the course of this week if you guys have been following it so not even gonna look into the article just title sorrento shares rebound as biopharma denies short seller allegations threatens legal action so you guys have to understand i've played small cap stocks for the majority of my career that's like how i got into trading was it's is very high volatility very small cap very high risk um very speculative stocks i should say um again i'm it, they're not risky in in my eyes but they're small stocks and small stocks come with a, a lot of kind of shady practice sometimes unfortunately that's just the reality but um again a small market cap does leave these stocks and assets prone to manipulation which will happen and that's why like this like lawsuits legal things like at, at this scale like just kind of child's play in my mind not child's play obviously it does affect the stock it can be detrimental it's just never played out on my time horizon so like this makes short term this does make short-term price action like uh this does initiate short-term price action which is what we saw it, it, when this news was initially released about some uh, insider trading and whatnot uh they did like they saw they saw it they saw it they saw the red all right but this doesn't actually play out on long-term time frames this never really phases me you guys any news in the, in this category again in this kind of drama category not super tangible news and not like the the treatment is just a, a flop um, doesn't phase me so just know that so let's move on to sorrento we'll take a look at sorrento right just let's move down sorry e right here so down 4.8 percent on the day let's go back to um over here so again i i just think sorrento is likely to follow this channel you're seeing somewhat of a i mean i expect kind of an ascending wedge or an ascending triangle i'm sorry to play out here ascending triangle uh, traditionally bullish pattern so we'll probably come up retest uh retest the 14 dollars region probably come back down to retest what is now uh an upward trend line and line of support so it'll probably bounce off uh hit 14 i'm thinking again you guys this could very well not happen i, I have to keep reiterating that so maybe touch 14 come back down to like the 1250 region and then once again go up to retest this uh this 
pretty conservative upward trend line that we set at the beginning of August, okay, which would be about $17. Until, unless they release some great news, I believe then we'll just skyrocket to a new high. And ultimately my price target is $27 for Sorrento. Um, if you guys haven't heard me say that before. Okay, so that's Sorrento. Let's move on here to uh, crypto. And this will actually segue nicely into the Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin Tesla talk we're going to have right now. All right. So we'll close this one out with some crypto. Bitcoin is looking strong today, but the real winners in my eyes at the moment are Ethereum and Ripple, um, which are ETH and XRP. All coin season is here and they're picking up steam quick. These two are significantly below their all time highs. And I personally expect a crazy amount of growth potential ahead for all of my altcoin plays. I think that the new bull market in this sector has entered. Uh, I think that the sorry, I think the new bull market this sector has entered will be significantly greater than the last one. There's so much new money chasing shiny world changing assets out there right now. And cryptocurrencies check both of those boxes bullish. So can't say it enough. You guys so bullish on Bitcoin cryptocurrency as a whole. Uh, you see Ether killing it today. We'll just take a quick look at ETH. Um, so ETH, so Bitcoin, again, oh, Bitcoin's actually up right now. Bitcoin's doing super well. Just uh, So the trading view refreshes around 2 p.m. my time, so that's 50 minutes ago. So it's good to see that in the last 50 minutes, Bitcoin's already up 1.5%. I'm excited to take a look at that in real time with you guys. Okay, so ETH, uh, again, ETH just broke out just like last night, I believe, broke out. We're seeing another move up. Just keep setting those new all-time highs. With this stuff, I just, I really just... I don't even want to look at the daily. Even that's too short for me. I want to look at the macro time frame. So we're looking at the weekly right now. And again, you guys, just look at what ETH has done in the past. Uh, ETH once reached an all-time high of almost $1,500, about $1,400, give or take, you know. So it can still like 4X from here and just be around. It would be above previous all-time highs, but not much. Okay, so it could still 4X from here. And if it 4X, it would just be uh, at about previous all-time highs, which the fundamentals around this space are so much more, so much stronger right now. Bitcoin, ETH, XRP, just the fundamental landscape is so much more supportive in these things. There's so many more projects uh, being built on Ethereum. ETH 2.0 is is um, is upon us. That's huge for the Ethereum blockchain um, and just the ETH protocol overall. So super exciting times here. Uh, I mean, you guys, I, I'm convinced myself that this is just the beginning of the next bull market. Let's take a quick look at Bitcoin here, um, just because. Oh man, yeah. Look, it's 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 thinking about it. it's thinking about retesting this line that I've had drawn here for a long time. So again, Bitcoin. Actually, sorry. Let's zoom out a little bit. You guys see here, Bitcoin is is coming up quick. Um, previous all time highs, obviously around 20k. I think that's like I've said many times. Mid September is my guess that we will reach 17k. Probably test this area right before um, the 20k levels. Pull back. We'll probably pull back after 17k, and then it's a it's a rip to 40, 50, 100k. No matter depending on how this plays out. Okay, so um, I mean, just so so bullish on this. Let's take a look at the. Uh, sorry, let's take a look at this chart, which is cool. So this is again a chart from TradingView themselves. They published this. The guys who own this entire site. Um, Publish this and they say Tesla stock is the most viewed asset in America. Our data shows that throughout July, Tesla was the most viewed stock in 31 states. Bitcoin was not far behind. That's great news. Again, you guys, it's exposure. That's the biggest thing when it comes to Bitcoin specifically amongst almost all assets and stocks in my eyes is just exposure. It's just people understanding what it is and educating themselves. So since the start of the year, Tesla stock is almost tripled in price. Meanwhile, Bitcoin is up 60% year to date. So what I see here is you see some similarities in this charts, right? Both speculate like Dude, Tesla is realistically such uh, is, is a bubble right now. I'm not afraid to say that. I've said it many times before. I love Tesla as a company. Uh, I think Elon's an amazing entrepreneur and one of, uh, a great human being. Um, but I think it is bubbled up right now. I think that there's so much hype fueling and just filling the Tesla bubble. Um, but that said, I think Bitcoin has the same bubbly effect. We know that for a fact. And what I'm seeing right here is that it looks like Bitcoin is like playing out similarly to how Tesla was right before this point. So if you see here, you see some uh, sideways movement. You see that little uptrend, that little hill, little hill, and then you see the, the parabolic nature kick in. Okay, so I think that we're like right here on Bitcoin and uh, we're about to take off. So my chart backs that what we were just looking at here. Uh, I think we're about to take off right here and then, yeah, shoot up to like 17K. And that is, I mean, this is. The more I look at this, the more I'm convinced of what was just kind of a theory, but now I'm like pretty, I'm feeling pretty good about that happening. So 
not financial advice. You guys know the deal. All right, so let's get into this. Kramer says Tesla stock split is good for the market because it appeals to young investors. Let's talk Tesla. Let's talk the stock split. I want to give you guys my um, my take on this. So CBC's Jim Kramer. You guys might recognize his face. Some love him, some hate him. I uh, I fall on both sides depending on what he's saying. CBC's Jim Kramer and Tesla's decision to split said Tesla's decision to split its stock is beneficial for the market overall since it may help young people get interested in buying individual equities. I think the idea of getting newer, younger people involved in the stock market who aren't just brainwashed to put money into index funds is terrific um, however Kramer cautioned that Tesla's five for one split does alone not add any additional value to the company so that's I've had some people hit me up like now that now that Apple is doing a stock split now that Tesla is doing a stock split um, should I buy is it a good time to buy and that's exactly what they want to happen that's exactly what they want you got like people newer investors to think like oh it's cheaper now it obviously means it's more valuable which is like the most obvious um, the most obvious tactic if you understand what's going on but but i know anecdotally for from all the people who've hit me up and asked about these um in the past week that it works so it's very smart for apple and tesla to do this again robin hood does fractional investments so uh that i mean robin hood kind of beat them to it in a sense but still having a having a lower price stock uh like price per share does give the impression that it's cheaper and it's a it's more of a bargain as opposed to a thousand plus dollar stock so uh great move great just strictly marketing move it's nothing but that again no value is added to the company aside from getting uh newer traders to buy your inflated stock all right so sorry sorry tesla moon boys uh roast me in the comments all right so um actually you know we'll take it we'll take a look at tesla real quick uh tesla evs right uh, so tesla up 1.8 percent today um tesla is just i mean i yeah again i don't trade tesla you guys so i'm not on this chart much that's why it might look a little goofy so let's go to the one day here to see what it's doing on the daily so tesla is just absolutely just ripping still um still not at all-time highs it will be interesting to see if it can once again retest this like 1800 dollars region um so insane what's tesla's market cap at right now let's go down here Th over 300 billion dollars that's crazy that's crazy for tesla and like their financials but again tesla's like epitome of a story stock their mission's great they're uh, changing the world for the better in my opinion so i get it people want like investors this just proves why bitcoin and tesla are the most searched stocks on trading view because they're the most innovational they're the most innovational assets in the world so tesla and bitcoin aren't even comparable in terms of what they are bitcoin is an asset class similar to its digital gold that's how i explain it tesla is actually a company with financials and stuff so that makes it a little different and a little more prone to becoming a bubble like like a actual like um defined bubble but um yeah i mean both both are looking super good i wouldn't be surprised to see tesla reach new all-time highs as well Okay, so moving on, Barstool's Dave Portnoy hosts Winklevoss Twins for Bitcoin Talk. Huge news. This is like the biggest news of uh, of the week, probably, in my opinion. If you guys saw the video I did, again, I did mention it in yesterday's, uh, yesterday's whatever crypto convo I posted yesterday. Uh, again, you guys go check it out. It's a little weird. I, I wish they did a better job of, of talking to Dave in it because he... They left. He le They left Dave's house, which is a nice house, by the way. It makes sense. Dude's rich. Um, they left, leaving him wondering. They didn't do a good for for two kingpins, for two of ob arguably the most competent individuals within Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. They did a very bad job of articulating why Bitcoin's important. All right. So if you guys have to, if you guys are Bitcoin bulls and uh, you, you're ever trying to tell your friends about Bitcoin, have an elevator pitch ready. All right. Mine is roughly. Gold 2.0. It's digitally, it's pro the only provably scarce asset on the entire planet. There's only 18 million in existence right now. There's only ever going to be 21 million to exist. That's in the code that will not change for as long as humans and computers and Bitcoin are around. All right, so um, again, Barstool Sports founder Dave Portnoy posted a video of his meeting with Gemini Exchange founders Tyler and Cameron Winklevoss on Twitter. You guys may recognize these guys if I haven't said that from the Social Network movie with Mark Zuckerberg. They technically did found Facebook. All right, so um, very, I mean, these guys are trend. These guys know how to spot trends. I'll just say that much. Portnoy, also known as Davy Day Trader, king of the day traders on Twitter for his stock trading antics, recently invited the Winklevoss twins over to his house to teach him about Bitcoin via the August 4th tweet. After briefing Portnoy on the basics, the twins guided the Twitter trader through a few purchases on Gemini. Using the 250K he start, uh, statedly sent to the exchange before their arrival, the trio even discussed Link after Portnoy inquired about the asset. Hey, you guys, did I mention to you that Chainlink is the first video that I made in regard to investing? Go check it out if you want to hear me sound stupid. <laughs> so, um, again, uh, super bullish just for crypto, uh, crypto and Bitcoin as a whole. Just exposure. 
Dave is like arguably the loudest voice amongst the new retail trader, retail Joe Robin Hood day trader movement. So getting getting Bitcoin on their radar is exactly what you need to like what needs to happen. Just getting these millennial Gen X investors um, or Gen Y, whatever, whatever generation it is uh, interested in Bitcoin, just getting it on the radar again once you start learning once you start understanding the the solution that bitcoin actually solves especially in this current global macroeconomic landscape then you want a piece of it it's like it's exactly like tesla you just want a piece of of something that's doing something big and changing the world all right so we covered this we covered this uh that's pretty much that's pretty much gonna wrap it up. We'll take a just quick look down down the watch real quick. Bitcoin, Ether doing well right now. Super stoked to see that. Link pulling back a little bit. Link still extremely strong. Um, still bullish long term on Link, but I do think it will see a pullback. EOS looking good. XRP. Uh, I do like these two plays right now as well. GBTC did pretty well today. ETH ended the day down, which is super surprising. ETHE is the weirdest one of the weirdest stocks I've ever played. Um, so stay stay safe with that one. But I'm very bullish right now with the price it's at currently okay i think it's very undervalued personally um obviously riot and mars super bullish on where those are going in the near future and uh, long-term future medium all, all time frames are very bullish on those gold gold and the gold and silver market as well as all miners pulled back today which is interesting because as you can see here the dxy that's the us dollar index um is down today as well so usually when the dollar is down assets like gold and silver will do well because they're safe havens so that's weird to see um I'm still very, but they've been ripping, so it's not surprising to see them pull back a little. I, I think that rally will, it's very likely that it will continue. So weed, not doing good. Um, Zoom, Peloton, some stay-at-home stocks, not doing too hot today either. Um, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of red. We're seeing a lot of chip makers down. Um, Inovio Novax did pretty good today. Again, you guys, I said in the last stock talk, we could see a bounce there, so it's not surprising to me. Sorrento down. Moderna up a little bit. I'm still bullish on Moderna, still focused on Moderna. Uh, a lot of the EV plays pretty flat for the most part compared to how volatile they've been. It's Nikola dead flat, which is crazy to see Nikola flat. Um, so, yeah, it, it was a pretty flat day in the markets overall. Nothing exciting. By far the most excited, as I'm sure you guys can tell at this point, on the cryptocurrency market blockchain sector as a whole. So I will keep an eye on that one. We'll talk more about, actually, I forgot to mention, there's some tweets that Dave released today. So Friday I'm recording this. I'm about to record the Waves Weekly that I'll be posting tomorrow right after this. And I'm going to show you guys some tweets that Dave posted. Eli got Elon Musk, Miley Cyrus in the mix too. So this dude has clout, you guys. This dude has influence. This dude has reach, which is the most, again, that's what I want to, that's the main point. Point I want to get off with talking about this isn't necessarily because I think Dave's a great trader and he will he himself will impact Bitcoin. Obviously, you guys know that it's his reach, it's the influence he has over over generation that is very important to to convince of Bitcoin in the cryptocurrency market. All right, so we'll call it there, you guys. Again, if you want to know my exact positions in literally any of the stocks we talked about today, you can check out my complete portfolio daily newsletter, all call options, all put options all stock positions, all cryptocurrency positions. And again, you get one of these bad boys every day in your inbox. Um, I usually send it out from 8.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. Hawaii time. So it's about an hour before market close every single day. Um, and again, just give you guys my, my trades and let you guys know what I'm thinking about the markets, okay? So check that out if you're interested. Once again, starting Sunday at midnight, I, I am raising the price to 20 a month. Not crazy, but I, I think it's, um, it's kind of enough to slow down the inflow of a uh, of new subscribers so we'll see if that happens um again i appreciate you guys if you are a part of this i appreciate you if if not if you're just watching that's perfectly fine that's totally cool with me again i want to be as inclusive as possible but especially if you watch this long and just can sit through my rambling i truly appreciate you and uh i look forward to the next one again you guys as always let me know down in the comments below um what you're thinking what you're excited about what, what you thought was exciting over the week if you ended the week green or red please let me know down below always love talking to you guys always love learning from you guys and until next time always remember take action Make waves. Peace.